Have you ever wondered where viruses, these microscopic infectious agents, come from? In the realm of science, the origin of viruses remains an enigma. These tiny entities, so minuscule yet so potent, they have the power to alter the course of life on Earth. Despite their significance, their beginnings remain shrouded in mystery. The question of whether viruses predate or postdate the last universal common ancestor, or LUCA, sparks intense debate among virologists. Unraveling this mystery isn't just an exercise in scientific curiosity. Understanding where viruses come from could pave the way for groundbreaking advances in the field of virology. Theories abound, but three main hypotheses stand out in the quest to decipher the origin and evolution of viruses. The progressive, the regressive, and the virus-first hypotheses. Each brings a unique perspective to the table, yet none can conclusively solve the riddle. Let us delve into the three main hypotheses that try to unravel this mystery. The first hypothesis we'll explore is the progressive hypothesis. This hypothesis, also known as the escape or cellular origin hypothesis, puts forth the idea that viruses originated from genetic elements that managed to escape from the genome of ancient cellular life or LUCA, the last universal common ancestor. Imagine a segment of genetic material, independent and mobile, breaking free from its cellular home. Over time, these rogue genetic elements, these escapees if you will, evolved progressively, adopting new traits and characteristics. This evolutionary journey, according to the progressive hypothesis, led to the birth of what we now know as viruses. This hypothesis paints an intriguing picture of virus evolution, one that's rooted in a cellular escape act. But like any good scientific theory, it's not without its flaws and shortcomings. One key issue lies in the unique structures that are present in viruses, but not in other cells. Viruses possess unique features, such as a capsid, a protein shell that encloses their genetic material. This capsid, along with other distinct viral structures, is not found in other cells. The progressive hypothesis struggles to explain the origin of these unique viral structures. If viruses indeed originated from genetic elements that escaped from a cellular ancestor, where did these unique structures come from? How did these escapees acquire such distinct features that are absent in their alleged cellular ancestors? Moreover, the progressive hypothesis does not account for the diverse nature of viruses. Viruses exhibit an immense range of sizes, shapes, and genetic compositions. Some are DNA-based, others are RNA-based. Some are enveloped with a lipid bilayer, others are not. The progressive hypothesis falls short in explaining this staggering diversity among viruses. This hypothesis offers one possible explanation, but it doesn't cover all the bases. It leaves us with unanswered questions and missing pieces in the puzzle of virus evolution. But remember, science is a journey of discovery, a quest for understanding. And as we delve deeper into the other hypotheses, we'll further unravel the enigma that is the origin and evolution of viruses. Next up is the regressive hypothesis, a theory that paints viruses as fallen cells. This theory, also known as the reduction hypothesis or degeneracy hypothesis, introduces viruses as former small parasitic cells. The narrative it weaves is one of loss and adaptation. As these parasitic cells began to rely more and more on their hosts for survival, they gradually lost their genetic and cellular components that were not essential for their parasitic lifestyle. This process of reduction and elimination led to the viruses we know today. The regressive hypothesis suggests a regressive evolution, a concept that challenges our conventional understanding of evolution as a process of gaining complexity. Instead, it argues that viruses have simplified over time, shedding unnecessary elements to become lean, efficient parasites. This hypothesis provides a plausible explanation for the unique structures found in viruses. Unlike the progressive hypothesis, which fails to account for these structures, the regressive hypothesis posits that these are remnants of their past as more complex organisms. However, just like any theory, the regressive hypothesis has its limitations. One significant critique is the prominence of genes in viruses that have no cellular counterparts. If viruses truly evolved from cellular life forms, wouldn't we expect to see more genetic similarities? Another point to consider is the distinct nature of viruses. Despite their parasitic lifestyle, they bear no resemblance to other parasites, even the smallest ones. This uniqueness raises questions about their supposed cellular origins. 
The regressive hypothesis, while compelling, is not without its flaws. It provides a fascinating perspective on the nature of viruses, portraying them as organisms that have evolved by shedding complexity rather than gaining it. Yet, it fails to convincingly explain the unique genetic makeup of viruses and their distinct nature from other parasites. While intriguing, the regressive hypothesis leaves some questions unanswered. As we continue to delve into the mysteries of viral origins, these unanswered questions push us to explore further, to question more, and to never stop learning. The final hypothesis, the virus first hypothesis, suggests viruses have been around longer than we thought. This theory postulates that viruses predate even the earliest cellular life forms, archaea, bacteria, and eukarya. According to this hypothesis, the stage was set in the pre-cellular world, a time when inorganic molecules were coming together and reacting to create organic molecules. In this chemical dance, viruses may have emerged from an aggregation of proteins and nucleic acids, while other molecules continue to evolve, developing enzymes for synthesizing membranes, cell walls, and other cellular components. Viruses remained in their acellular form. They, however, gained a unique ability, the capacity to infect cellular life and replicate within it. But this hypothesis, like the others, is not without its potential pitfalls. If we accept that viruses existed before cellular life, we must then redefine what a virus is. Furthermore, a daunting question arises. How did the very first viruses replicate and survive without host cells? This question challenges the fundamental nature of viruses as we understand them today, as obligate parasites that can't live or multiply outside a host body. Yet, the virus first hypothesis offers an intriguing perspective pushing us to reconsider our understanding of life's earliest beginnings. Could viruses really have existed before cellular life? It's a provocative question, one that continues to fuel the ongoing debate about the origins and evolution of viruses. As we can see, the origin of viruses is a complex and debated topic. We've explored three main hypotheses, the progressive, the regressive, and the virus first theories. Each of these hypotheses presents unique perspectives and challenges, and none has been universally accepted as definitive. This ongoing debate underscores the need for further research. For the more we learn about these elusive entities, the better equipped we'll be to combat them. While the mystery remains, one thing is clear. Understanding viruses is crucial to our survival and advancement.